while I'm break here from my other project, <coughs> I took notice that there is Oregon grape root growing here. And uh, for those of you who don't know what that is, it's a plant native to Oregon. It has fruit that are blue and somewhat resemble grapes. So it's called Oregon grape. And uh, I don't recall the fruit being edible, so don't quote me on anything like that. But it makes these fruit, they look like little blueberries. And uh, it's leaves, sort of like holly leaves. You see they're oppositional to each other, two leaves on either side, all the way to the tip. And they're uh, slightly serrated, but it doesn't hurt you when you touch them. A little bit like holly or something. Uh, it's a low growing, a couple feet tall grows in the understory of more mature forests generally. There's a lot of it that grows around Northwest Oregon and other parts of Oregon and the general Northwest. But, and I believe, here's the thing. I have seen it growing as an ornamental in uh, parking lots and uh, apartment complexes and stuff. And that might just be out here, but if it works, it's a very hardy plant. So if, and it like shades. So if it, I think, I think it's even in other parts of the US, I think you can, find this and it's very recognizable it looks like a holly you know it's got the little serrated if it's not serrated it's not Oregon grape root um, sometimes it turns a little red the leaves and uh, it makes these blueberries at any rate let me sacrifice a small one so that we can get a look at what the root looks like because the root is the part that is useful let's get that out of there get deep and it'll just grow back they they grow back from rhizomes. This one's connected to another very strong plant. It does not want me to pull it out. There we go. All right, what do we have here? This is the root. Everything from, ooh, Everything from like uh, that point down basically is root. And uh, as you can see, if you peel, let me scratch it with my fingernail. If you peel the bark off and look at what's underneath, let's see if I can get this in focus. Oh my goodness. It's yellow, nice and yellow. And it'll actually stain your hands a little yellow. You can use this to dye things. It's pretty, it's a nice yellow color. And as you're drying it out, if you have it on any cloth or paper towels, those will turn yellow. So, and I think it's already turning my finger yellow a little bit, but yeah, this is Oregon grape root. What's it useful for? Well, the Native Americans in this area used it as a cure-all, like a panacea, like you use this for anything, any random thing pretty much because it's very safe like you just can't I mean you can drink like some strong tea it don't really taste bad it's just kind of earthy and mildly it has like a weird little sweet flavor you know it's not nothing crazy just panacea you know mint was used as a panacea out here too for that matter but this specifically and I believe it's even been studied a bit you know and there's certain natural terpenes and flavonoids and stuff in there and they function well as a antimicrobials, antibiotics, and uh, anti-inflammatories, analgesics, you know, pain, pain reliever, swelling, whatever. And I believe, at least in my experience, this one isn't very much of a diuretic. Some herbs are diuretics, and that's why it lowers your blood pressure, and that's why they're anti-inflammatories. But this one, I've never, you know, noticed an extreme diuretic quality to it. I doubt it. I doubt it'll really mess with your blood pressure too much, which is fine, you know generally a good thing it's very good as an anti-inflammatory on a scale I like to I like to put oregano up there at like 9.5 or something because it is an extremely effective antibiotic and in my experience um, I've used it to like get rid of tooth infections and stuff you know and uh, this one I've used too for the same purpose and I'd say that this one's like a 7.5 oregano is like a 9.5 but Oregano burns a lot, and you have to use it quite strong, you know, in order to get the effect. This one, you still got to use it, you know, stronger regularly. You just use it over several days or something, and it works. But 
this stuff tastes a lot better. It's more palatable. It's not burny. You know, oregano is great. I'm not knocking oregano at all. Oregano is also a pretty good pain reliever and, and analgesic and swelling reducer. So, and it's like way up there, 9.5 on that shit too. But uh, this stuff, <sighs> at least basically is good. It's just about how much you use and over what period of time. Um, this is widely available. It's very cheap. If you want to buy it, you can also just find it everywhere. It's just growing. Like there's acres of it in some places and stuff. And I think you can technically get it all over the country. Um, cause it, it grows in the mountains and everything. So it likes cold at least. And even in the further South areas, I think it might still be around and maybe as an ornamental or something, whatever. Uh, it's very easy to dry. You just kind of, I would uh, clean it really well, right? Get just the dirt off, you know? The bark is fine. I leave the bark on, if it comes off on its own, whatever. Just clean it real good, scrub it up. And uh, cut it into little chunks and whatever bits you want it to be in at its final form. Shred it, whatever you want. Because it, once it dries, it's pretty much just going to stay like that. Unless you want to go even further and powder it after it dries, you know? You could do that. But uh, it's not very easy to cut once it's dried because it's just like a little piece of wood. But you break it up. Dry it out. It also dries better if you break it up. And then, honestly, you just stick it in some in some cloth or something and stick it in a paper bag. This stuff dries out on its own easily in like normal house you know conditions. It, it doesn't need like anything excessive because it's already gonna do. It's wood, you know. It's like it's already gonna do its drying business just as long as it's not having water spilled on it or something. Very good medicine to have in your cabinet, you know. At the end of the day, and I, I heard. I heard that uh, YouTube might not let people talk about this kind of stuff or like off-grid things. So in the future, I might uh, talk my way around this and just look at it in a historical perspective about what the indigenous peoples of the world have, have used these things for. And this will be some good education about history and stuff. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Next time.